Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on and cover section 5.1b. So we're going to start this section by just kind of refreshing on all of the identities we went over in 5.1a. So you know how people say you need to know this like the back of your hand? Okay, I want you to know this like the front of your face. <laughs> okay, these are things that you should be able to just whip out super, super fast, which I think all of you should be able to whip out these first ones super fast, which is just our reciprocal identities. Cotangent is the same as 1 over tangent theta. Tangent theta is the same as 1 over cotangent theta, right? Secant and cosine are inverses, so that means secant theta can be written as 1 over um, cosine theta, and cosine theta can be written as 1 over secant theta. And then the same thing is true with our um, sine and cosecant. Cosecant can be written as 1 over sine theta, and sine theta can be written as 1 over uh, cosecant theta. Okay, so these are all good properties to know in case we need to do some replacements when we're working through. Now, most of the time when we use these, it's to be able to plug them in to our Pythagorean identities. So remember our little shortcut on remembering these. Um, you can always go back to the Pythagorean theorem and derive all of them if you forget them. But our little shortcut ways of remembering them, the first one is that you sin, then you confess, and then you're one with God, right? You sin, you confess, and then you're one with God. So sin is our sine squared theta, confess is our cosine squared theta, and then that's equal to we're one with God. Now remember, we can use this, we can solve this for cosine squared and get uh, one minus sine squared, right? We can solve for sine squared theta and move the cosine over, and we can even bring it down further into factored quantities, right? We went over that last time. Um, the next one is our, just give me one tan second, right? <laughs> one tan second. We're losing our patience. Give me one tan second. So the missing thing here is our tangent squared theta. So one plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta. And then our last one was um, the man ordering at the restaurant that I worked at, right? Who always ordered one cocos. <laughs> One cocos, <laughs> that's what it sounded like, right? And remember, we have to remember what the cocos sounds, uh, stands for, okay? It's not cosine, it stands for cotangent and then cosecant, okay? So when we order one cocos, right, our first one is cotangent squared theta, and that's equal to cosecant squared theta. Okay. So this stuff over here is just to kind of help you remember. If you want to, you can just straight out forget all the silliness and just memorize these. Okay, We need to know those. We need to be able to recall them really quickly. If I say, hey, I, have, I need a relationship between cosine and tangent. Cosine and tangent. Well, we know that cosine is part of tangent, but we also know here's one with tangent, and this is secant, which is related to cosine. So I could use this for a cosine-tangent relationship. Does that make sense? Okay. And then we also went over our negative identities. And remember, the only angle um, whose sine changed when going from a negative theta to a positive theta was sine, right? And sine changed, cosine didn't change, um, and then tangent also changed because it, it has sine within it, right? So that means that sine of a negative theta is the same thing as negative sine theta. Um, and then that's true with its reciprocal also. So cosecant of negative theta would give us negative cosecant theta. And then cosine didn't change, right? Whether we have a negative angle or a positive, um, it stays the same. Cosine of negative theta is the same as cosine theta. And then secant, because it's related to cosine, its sine also doesn't change. So this is the same thing as secant theta. And then because tangent and cotangent have sine within it, if sine is changing sine, um, then tangent will also. So tangent of a negative angle is the same thing as the negative tangent value of our regular positive angle. Okay? And then same thing with cotangent. This gives me a negative cotangent theta.
Okay, so with negative identities, the only one that stays the same is cosine. Doesn't cosine and secant, right? It doesn't matter if we look at the negative angle or the positive angle, we get the same cosine value. Um, but sine, tangent, and their inverses, they all turn into the negative form or um, the opposite sign, right? All right, and then the last identities that we went over, which I think we've seen before, is um, tangent theta is the same thing as sine theta over cosine theta, right? Because remember, tangent is y over x and on the unit circle. Our y is just our sine value and our x is just our cosine value, right? And then the inverse is the same. Cotangent theta is going to give us cosecant theta over sine theta. Okay. So this whole first page, we're going to go over like a million times <laughs> because we want to make sure that you're really familiar with these identities um, so that when you're working your problems, you're not just stuck. At, like, I have no idea how these are related. We have something to kind of reflect back on. Okay, so that's kind of our starting off point. So let's look at how to use um, some of these identities. So this first one says we want to write secant x in terms of sine x. So if we want to write secant x, that means we want to end up with like secant x equals something, right? We're trying to write it in terms of some other trig function. So the other trig function that we want to write it in terms of is sine. So I am looking for something that connects secant and sine. Okay, so looking, let's just put this, looking for a connection um, for secant x and sine x. Okay, so if I'm looking for this connection, hopefully I can find an equation that uses both of these. And if so, then I, all I have to do is solve it for secant. If I can't find one that uses both of these, then I could look and see, well, do I have something that maybe involves their inverses? So maybe I don't have secant and sine, but maybe I have cosine and sine. Or maybe I don't have secant and sine, but I have secant and cosecant, right? So let's go ahead and look back at our identities. We're looking for secant and sine. So secant and sine are not reciprocal identities, right? Secant is the opposite of cosine, and sine is the inverse of um, sine, or sorry, cosecant. So that, that doesn't help me. So then we look at our Pythagorean theorem. We have sine and cosine. Well, we really want sine and secant, but at least secant is the reciprocal identity of cosine, so we might could use that one. Here we have secant, but we're looking for secant and sine. And here we have secant and tangent. And tangent, I can't turn that into some version of sine. Right? I mean, I could write it as sine over cosine, but then I, I don't know what I would do with the cosine to get rid of it. It's, it's not, it's going to leave me with more than what I'm wanting because I just want sine and secant. Right? And then here, cosecant, again, could be written, I could write my sine um, in terms of cosecant, but then cotangent involves both sine and cosine. So again, I'm ending up with more than I want. So my best bet is going to be this first identity, the sin confess be one with God. So on the other page over here, I'm going to go ahead and say that the identity that I'm going to use, identity, is going to be sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. All right, this is the identity that's going to help me out. So I'm just going to use this identity, but instead of writing cosine squared theta, I'm going to write that in its reciprocal version so that I have a secant in there. Okay, so just rewriting this identity, I end up with sine squared theta plus, now instead of cosine squared theta, I'm going to write that cosine in terms of secant. So that would be 1 over secant squared theta is equal to 1. Are you with me? So I'm using this first Pythagorean identity, but I'm writing the cosine part of it um, as its reciprocal trig function, which is secant. That way I now have a relationship or a connection between sine and secant. Okay, so if I look at my problem again, it wants me to write secant x. So I want to end up with secant x equals whatever it happens to equal. So secant x is what I want to get, um, what I want to solve for. Okay, so I'm just going to say solve for secant x. All right. Well, right now my secant is stuck 
inside um, the denominator here, right? So I'm gonna just multiply every single term by secant squared x. Because if I can multiply every term by secant squared x, it'll get that out of the denominator, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do secant squared uh, theta. Oh, I'm using thetas, I should be using x's. I'll change them to x's at the end. Okay, secant squared theta times sine squared theta plus, I'm gonna do secant squared theta times one over secant squared theta is equal to secant squared theta times one. Okay, so all I'm doing is just taking that denominator and multiplying um, all three terms by that denominator so that my secant, um, I can cancel out of the denominator, right? Okay, so now I have secant squared theta sine squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta, right? And my pen is just about to run out of ink. Let's see if I have another blue. All right, okay. Okay, so now remember, we're solving for secant. We wanna to try to get secant all by itself. And right now, it's stuck within two terms. It's stuck within the secant squared sine squared term, and it's over here. So I wanna make sure every term that has a secant is all on the same side so I can get it by itself, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and move, I'm just gonna move this term to the other side. So that would leave me with just my one, right? I still have my secant squared theta on that time, on that side, but if I take this whole term and move it, the way that I move it is by subtracting. So I'm gonna subtract secant squared theta sine squared theta, okay? So now everything's on one side. Now all I have to do is get the secant by itself. So in order to do that, I can factor it out like a greatest common factor. So I have one is equal to secant squared theta. Okay, if I take secant squared theta out of each term, it's like I'm dividing it off of each term. So secant squared theta divided by secant squared theta leaves me with a one. Here, if I take out the secant squared theta, I'm left with sine squared theta. Okay, all right, so we're trying to solve for secant theta. So right now, I was able to pull my secant squared theta out, so now it's almost by itself, right? But I still have this quantity being multiplied. So I need to get rid of this multiplied quantity to get the secant squared theta by itself. And when it's written next to a quantity like this, it means multiply. So to undo multiplication, I'm just gonna divide off this quantity that we don't need. One minus sine squared theta. But if I divide it off on that side, I have to divide it off on this side. One minus sine squared theta. Okay. So that gets rid of that. And I'm actually gonna mark out this example. This is the same example we did um, on page four of the last section. So I'm just gonna mark that out so I have more writing space for this problem. Okay, I'm not gonna work it again. If you wanna see that one worked again, you can go back to page four of 5.1a and it'll be there for you. All right, so now we have um, one over one minus sine squared theta, right, is equal to secant squared theta. So we've almost done it. We've almost got secant writ all by itself. Writ, written, wrote, <laughs> all by itself, right? But right now it's a secant squared. And remember, we're trying to just write secant x. So we just want it by itself. So when I go to get this by itself to get rid of a square, I square root. And remember, whenever we square root, we have to remember the plus or minus. So plus or minus the square root of one over one minus sine squared theta is equal to the square root of secant squared theta. So that gets rid of my square. So now I have plus or minus the square root of one over one minus sine squared theta is equal to secant theta, okay? So now what we have done is we have written our secant right, which we were looking for, and we've written it in terms of x, meaning we can say secant is equal to something that only involves sine, which it's not pretty, but it's okay. We can enter it like that. It didn't tell us what um, quadrant this is in or anything, so we don't know if we want the plus or the minus, so we're just going to leave it like this, 
Okay, and then I'm just going to put a little note down here. Make sure you use the angle given. Okay, so what that means, make sure you use the angle that's given, is notice all of our identities we wrote using theta. It was just kind of like a generic angle. So um, when we talk about sin, confess your one with God, or one ten second, or one cocos, or whatever, um, we I usually write them with thetas. But in this problem, because it's using x's, we want to make sure that our angle is written as an x when we enter our answer in my math lab so we don't get it wrong. So what we end up here is that um, secant x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 over 1 minus sine squared x. Okay. So just writing it with the x instead of the theta because that's how they originally gave us their angle. Okay. All right, I want to look at a few more just so that we get um, some good practice using these identities. Okay, So again, we look at what we have, what we want to get to, and we look for a connection to those two things within the identities that we have to work with. Okay, So notice, this says write each of the following in terms of sine and cosine as the first step and then simplify so that no quantities appear using any trig functions necessary. Okay, so there's actually three things they asked me to do here. The first one is it says write each of the following in terms of sine and cosine. So that's step one, right? It even tells you as the first step. That's what we're gonna do as the first step is rewrite so that whatever we have here, it can be written with just cosines and sines. That's it, okay? Then the second thing is that we want to simplify it. Okay, so if it's something that can be simplified, we do that. And then the last thing it says is that we want no quotients. Okay, no quotients means we don't want to be um, left with fractions. So if we have something with a fraction, we should be able to get rid of the fraction by writing it with its reciprocal, right? All right, so let's look at one and see what we can do with this. First step is to write everything with sine and cosine. So this first quantity is one minus cosine theta. Perfect, that one's written in terms of cosine, right? And then one plus secant theta. So secant is not sine or cosine, so I need to change it so that it's written as sine or cosine. Secant, remember, is the reciprocal of cosine, so I can replace this with one over cosine theta. So I'm just going to rewrite this whole thing. So I have 1 minus cosine theta. And in my second quantity, I can write this as 1 plus 1 over cosine theta. So notice the only thing that I did is rewrite the secant as its reciprocal, which is 1 over cosine theta. So now I've done everything I need to do for number 1. I've rewritten this so all that I see is sine and cosine, which in this case I don't have any sine, but I've written it everything that I have as either sine or cosine, okay? All right, then we need to simplify. Well, I don't have any identities that allow me to interchange these things because notice all of our Pythagorean identities have squares in them, right? It's sine squared, cosine squared, tangent squared, secant squared, cotangent, cosecant squared, and I don't have that. So to simplify this, I'm simply gonna foil it out, okay? So if I start foiling, if I do 1 times 1, that gives me 1, right? 1 times 1 over cosine theta is just 1 over cosine theta. Okay, and then I need to distribute my negative cosine. So negative cosine theta times 1 is negative cosine theta. Negative cosine theta times 1 over cosine theta. This is multiplying fractions, right? This is like cosine theta over 1. So when I multiply those, I multiply the tops with tops. So negative cosine theta times 1. And on bottom, I multiply the 1 and the cosine theta. So what I end up with is a negative cosine theta over cosine theta, right? And then this just simplifies, right? This just simplifies to 1. So I have 1 plus 1 over cosine theta minus cosine theta minus 1. 
And now I can combine like terms, right? Because I have these two constant terms. I have a positive one, I have a negative one. Well, those just combine to zero, so I can just cancel those out. So really what I'm left with is one over cosine theta minus cosine theta. So that's all the simplifying I can do. So I've, I've finished the second thing it's asked me to do. The third thing is I just have to make sure I have no quotients left in my answer. So now that I've got it as simplified as I possibly can, I just want to make sure I don't have any fractions. So this term, the cosine theta, is totally fine. But this one, I need to make it not a fraction. So right now it's 1 over cosine. So what I can use is a reciprocal identity to flip it, right? So the reciprocal of cosine is secant, right? So in other words, I'm using my reciprocal identities here to replace that 1 over cosine. We know that 1 over cosine is the same thing as secant, okay? So I'm just going to replace that term with secant theta. So this becomes secant theta minus cosine theta. And that's all the simplifying we can do. Okay. So when they give you specific instructions like that, make sure you're following it to ensure that your answer ends up in the way that you want it to. Okay. So we're doing the same thing on number two. Number two, we're going to write everything in terms of sine and cosine. Then we're going to simplify it. Then we're going to make sure we have no quotients. Okay. All right. So let's move this up. First thing I want to do is make sure everything's written with sines and cosines. And if you notice, everything already is written with sines and cosines. So that worked out nicely, right? And then um, right now it's written as one big fraction, which is kind of hard maybe to um, simplify. So I just want to um, have you all recall that anytime we have an addition or a subtraction over a denominator, so in other words, like a minus b all over c, we can actually separate this into, into multiple terms. We can rewrite this as a over c minus b over c. So if I have more than one thing on top with a single denominator, what I can do is write each thing in the numerator over that denominator to create individual fractions. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here because I can see I'd really like to like do some reducing because um, I have cosine on top and cosine on bottom and sine on top and sine on bottom, but I can't cancel it the way it is because right now this is stuck together um, like one quantity, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just write each piece of this quantity over the denominator. So I'm going to write this as cosine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta minus sine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta. Okay, so just rewriting each term of the top over the bottom. And then I now, now that I don't have a quantity on top or bottom, I can go ahead and just reduce um, common, um, common terms, right? So <clears throat> whenever you see a squared, remember that means I have two copies of it. So if you need to, you can even rewrite this as cosine theta times cosine theta, right? Cosine squared means I have two copies being multiplied together all over sine theta, cosine theta. And the same thing with this term. This is sine squared, which means I have two copies of sine theta. So sine theta times sine theta over sine theta, cosine theta. And now it's really easy to see that on the first term we can cancel a cosine theta, right? And if you could do that from this step, if you just wanted to mark out that little squared and this cosine, I'm fine with that. Um, if you get confused, then go ahead and write out the copies of it. On the second term, I can now cancel a sine theta on top and bottom. So what I'm left with on this one is cosine theta over sine theta minus sine theta over cosine theta. And again, I don't have any squares, so I can't replace anything necessarily um, using the Pythagorean identities. But remember, for these problems, it did ask that we change everything to sine and cosine, which was already that way, simplify as much as possible, which we've already done. And then the last thing is to make sure that there's no quotients or no fractions. So we want to write this 
as just some term minus some term that doesn't have a denominator, okay? And we can't like cross multiply or do anything like that because we don't have an equal sign. So we have to see, is there something I could replace um, cosine over sine or sine over cosine with? So if I look back at my identities, reciprocals aren't gonna do it, right? Because I'm, I'm starting out with a fraction that has things on top and bottom. So that's not helping me. I can't use the Pythagorean identities because they all have squares, which I don't. I don't have any negative angles. So the last thing that I can look at here is down at the bottom of the page, my quotient identities, right? My quotient identities are um, rewriting either tangent or cotangent as a ratio of sine and cosine. So when sine's on top and cosine's on bottom, that's the same as tangent theta. And when cosine's on top and sine's on bottom, then that is um, that ratio is interchangeable with cotangent theta. So I'm just going to use those to rewrite what I have here. So notice I have cosine over sine, so that's cotangent. So this becomes cotangent theta minus sine over cosine. That is our tangent theta identity. And now that I've rewritten that, notice I have an answer that has no quotients. Okay? And there's great rejoicing from everyone. <sighs> All right. I have one more um, to do. If you would like to try it on your own, you can pause the video and see if you can figure it out. Or if you want to just follow along, you can do that as well. Okay. So notice this one's asking me to do the same three things. It says first we want to do it is write it in terms of sine and cosine. And then we want to simplify it as much as we can. And then we want to make sure that there's no quotients. Okay. All right. So looking at what we have, I'm kind of excited, right? I'm kind of excited because I'm seeing right away that I have a sine squared and I have a cotangent squared. So when I have squares, I know maybe I can use those Pythagorean theorems um, identities that we learned. Okay. But first I'm going to do what it says because we follow instructions and we're going to write everything in terms of sine and cosine. So notice the top of this is already written in terms of sine. So the top is fine, but on bottom I have a cotangent and I don't want to have a cotangent. I want to write things in terms of sine and cosine. So if I look back again over here at those identities we just used, our quotient identities, if sine is over cosine, that's tangent. If cosine is over sine, that's cotangent. So I look at what I have. I have cotangent. So cotangent means that I'm going to write this as cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. Okay. So just replacing the cotangent with the ratio that we know it's the same as. Now make sure when you rewrite it, since this is a cotangent squared, when we rewrite it as sine over cosine, they be they need to be squared as well. Okay. All right, so everything's written nicely here. So one thing I know I can do right away is I can replace this top piece, right? One minus sine squared theta. Um, that is something I can replace using my Pythagorean identities. So if I look at my Pythagorean identities, here's where I have a sine squared, okay? I have sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write that over here. One of the identities that I can use, identity, is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, right? Now notice what I have is I have 1 minus sine. So if I wanted to change this so that I have a 1 minus sine, I could just move this sine to the other side by subtracting, right? So if I move that to that side, then I would have cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. Are you all with me? So notice this 1 minus sine squared theta, 1 minus sine squared theta, is the same thing as cosine squared theta. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this top piece with cosine squared theta. And then on bottom, on bottom, I don't have a property for this at the moment because it's written with sines and cosines. So I'm going to go ahead and just get a common denominator so that I can just combine this into one term. And maybe when I combine it into one term, it'll be a little bit easier to work with. So if I want to combine it into one term, 
I need a common denominator. Remember, 1 is the same thing as 1 over 1. So my common denominator would be sine squared theta. I'm going to get a common denominator of sine squared theta. So that means on this one, I would need to multiply on top and bottom by sine squared theta. So I had have sine squared theta over sine squared theta, right? Plus cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. So now that I have a common denominator, I can go ahead and combine the tops of this bottom piece. Whoops, throw my pen around. So on top, I still have cosine squared theta. On bottom, I now have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta all over sine squared theta, right? All right, hopefully something in this will stick out to you. Hopefully this looks familiar, okay? The top, I can't do anything with that, but if we look at the top, the new numerator and the denominator that we just created, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, that's this original identity, right? Our original Pythagorean identity, which we know that sine, you sin, you confess you're one with God, right? So sine squared plus cosine squared gives us one. So I can replace this whole piece with just a one, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and write that. So I end up with cosine squared theta all over one over sine squared theta. Okay. All right, we're almost there, right? It's looking better than it was. And remember, whenever we have this division line or this fraction line, that just means divide. So I could rewrite this as cosine squared theta divided by one over sine squared theta. And then when we divide fractions, we flip and multiply by the reciprocal, right? So keep, change, flip. So cosine squared theta stays the same. We multiply by the reciprocal here, which gives us sine squared theta over one. And when we multiply straight across, right, these are both over one. So when I multiply straight across, I just end up with cosine squared theta times sine squared theta, which is good because I don't have any quotients or any fractions, and I can't go any further because even though I have a cosine squared and a sine squared, I can't use this identity because they're not being added. Here they're being multiplied. So this is as far as I can go, okay? All right, so um, I think we're going to stop. I think that's going to be enough for 5.1b. So 5.1b is just using those properties again and again and again and again, right? So when you're doing your homework, you might use this um, first page to reference as you're working through things, right? That way you have a, the list of all of your identities. Um, you kind of have to play around with these, right, to figure out how they work. Um, there are several different ways to solve each problem. Um, on the exam, I will specifically give you one that asks you to do it in this way. So make sure you know how to convert everything to sine and cosine and then simplify and work down to the point where you don't have something with quotients. Okay. Um, it's, it's asking you to do it in this specific way so that you're forced to do a little modifying along the way. Um, some people really love these ones because it's kind of like, you know, finding your way through the maze of getting to the, the end result. Um, other people struggle on these because it's sometimes hard to know where to start. So it's okay to struggle, to struggle a little bit. Um, but if you feel like you're getting super frustrated, um, be sure to reach out to me, right? Just text me or, or whatever, and, um, we can, uh, work through it together. Okay. All right, so that is the end of 5.1b. So you can now complete um, the My Math Lab assignment for that section.